Moto America on BN Sports is presented by Dunlop Motorcycle Tires, the only motorcycle tires designed, tested, and made in America for how you ride. And powered by Kawasaki. Let the good times roll. All right, so we're back here at the Dunlop Championship of Road America in Elkhart Lake. Of course, it's Road America, a four-mile track that is absolutely spectacular to view and to be a spectator and to race in Jason Pridmore. And we're getting ready for this Super Sport Super Stock 600 race. Conditions are different, but the grid remains the same. At least this first, most of the grid remains the same. Most of the grid, we lost a couple guys. Garrett Gerloff, guy who won yesterday. He's hungry, Greg. He looks like he's just riding so well this year. Next to him, Valentine, Valentin DeBees and Shane Richardson. Happy to see he's going to obviously be right back on that front row after a little bit of a break yesterday. Finishing second in Superstock, J.D. Beach. Second place yesterday, Jody Berry. Jason Farrell round out the second row. Benny Solis, our third place finisher. Brandon Poss, Jason Aguilar coming from the outside of row three. Row four, we got J.C. Camacho, Anthony Maziato, one of our KTM riders from last year, as well as Ashton Yates right next to him. And notice the different colors of numbers and that you have in terms of the blue and the yellow. That denotes the class. So the blue with the white backing is going to be Super Sport, and the yellow with the red backing is the Super Stock 600 class. So that's why you're seeing a total mix of what you see for number plates. Everyone gets scored in Super Sport, but then Super Stock 600, those yellow numbers have their own championship going on, and Jason and I will definitely touch on that as the race goes on. You can see an extremely full field, and these last five riders, Jason, they yeah. made it in on a LCQ. They certainly did. Gage Reese, he only missed by like point one of actually making the field, but he went out and won both the shoot, both the, the last chance qualifying races. Been keeping an eye on him. He's doing great. He's improving each round. Another one of our younger guys, and uh, he was able to get himself through that last chance qualifier both times. So here we go, we're on the warm-up lap, as you can see upper left-hand part of your screen here in Super Sport. And this is an opportunity for riders not only put heat in the tires, but just to get their last look at the racetrack before they just pin it and go for it all. Now let's take a look at JP's keys to the race presented by Kawasaki. In, in just a moment there, Jason, because, well, we got, we, right now, you know, this, Greg, when you look at the weather today, it, not very often during the year do I feel like I want to get back on a bike and ride. Maybe I just want to ride. I don't necessarily want to race. Today is one of those days. It is absolutely perfect at this track. And this is going to be very easy for them to get their tires warmed up. The last couple of days, we've had some rain. We've had some inclement weather. Yesterday was a whole other set of circumstances. Right now, all these riders are smiling, thinking this is going to be a great race. Yeah, there's some nerves. It's a good chance to get those nerves out of your stomach right now on this warm-up lap because the conditions are just that perfect. They're so good. And... Uh, you know, this, like I said, it's one of the few times that we go to do this anymore where I go, gosh, I wish I was riding today. It looks that nice. So in the Super Sport class, Super Sport actually runs full slick tires where Super Stock 600 run DOT tires. And this is going to be the last race that these, this particular class is on, well, the tire they're on. They're going to have a new tire. But before we do that, let's get to the... JP's Keys to the Race presented by Cowboys. JD Beach this morning broke the Outright Lap Super Sport record at a 218.1. We went 218.2 on Friday afternoon, but that is the fastest that a 600 that has ever gone around here. Uh, and yep. it was even damp in a couple spots from what I understood as far as like you had to stay on the right line in order to avoid those. So JD Beach, he's hungry today. They probably made a few changes to that bike possibly. Uh, but yesterday was definitely a conditions race. Can Valentin DeBees break his bad luck? And when I talk about bad luck, it's nothing that's necessarily been created. It's just a couple racing incidents at BIR and a choice yesterday that, hey, those guys could have come out the other end of that and been perfect also. That said, we're used to seeing him up in the front and always up in the front. Yep. And I heard him say just now that he feels like he's going to take a chance, and you know he'll take a chance. Superstock is wide open. With our two main title contenders that we're leading coming in here out of it, it's a great chance for Jason Aguilar to step up. It's a great chance for Connor Blevins to step up as they go on to the second half of their season. Both of our main guys are injured on the sidelines. We wish Nick McFadden nothing but the best. I understand he's got a broken collarbone that he's going to get fixed. Mm -hmm. And uh, Michael Gilbert just knocked himself on the head pretty good yesterday. So he is just resting today, going to take it easy. Both these kids should be back for Miller. Uh, but this is a really big opportunity for Jason Aguilar, who I said earlier is just rating to win one of these races. It's a good opportunity for him today to get on that streak. Michael Gilbert, by the way, also with a punctured lung, which means he can't fly home. He's got to drive home to California from here in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. We wish Michael Gilbert and Nick McFadden a speedy recovery. But here we go. We're getting ready for race number two. It's Super Sport here at Road America. It is the Dunlop Championship of Road America, and it is a spectacular turn number one. 
When you're standing here, it doesn't look as downhill as it actually is. But here we go. Visors are down, bikes are in gear, and revs are going up. When that upper left-hand corner, that red light's on, when it's off, we're going. Here we go. It looks like a pretty good launch. J.D. Beach from the second row there. Looks like he got a good launch. Yeah, that's a great launch by J.D. Beach from the second row, as you say, Greg. And we see Shane Richardson ducking in right behind there in fourth place on that Superstock 600. And Benny Solis fell in right behind him. And look oh, at oh. Valentine to Bees right around the outside. Of not scared. Not at not all. scared. He was able to go just like he said he was going to. He rode around the outside of Garrett Gerloff in turn one. And he's got himself right in behind J.D. Beach as they head down that back straightaway. Now, J.D. Beach this morning was over a second quicker than the next guy, which was his teammate Garrett Gerloff this morning. So we're going to see he's got his head down right now. We see that Benny Solis has also made a pass as Garrett Gerloff drafts past that Suzuki. And Valentin DeBees as they head down into turn five for the first lap. Turn five, everyone navigated turn one all right, considering that it was the first time they'd had that tailwind going. So it looks like everyone made it through. So now the top three starting to sort themselves out as they usually do. Monster Energy, Yamalu, YES, Graves, Yamaha a pair of them up front. And the M4 X-Star Suzuki from Albi France, Valentin DeBees going after him. Yep, and you can see all the crew, they just get running back down to where they need to be in case there's any issues. We saw Benny Sleese had made uh, a little bit of work out of Shane Richardson, got past him as it's up to fourth place. And uh, here we go. Through the carousel they go, and J.D. Beach, this is exactly the way he wants it. He was so fast this morning, he was just a couple hundredths of a second quicker this morning than he'd ever gone, which was 2016 in qualifying, a 218.128. We, we qualified in the rain, so the qualifying times were like 233s, 235s. Not really much of a sign of what's to come. But it's J.D. Beach who's trying to get his Monster Energy Yamalu YS Graves Yamaha, that 2017 model R6. He's trying to scoot away from these two riders right now. And we've seen this in the past, Greg, where J.D. gets going and these two guys get stuck racing together. And right now, when, this morning, when I got here, and I saw that J.D. Beach went 218-1, I went, whoa. Like, yeah. He is hungry today. He is ready to get yesterday out of the way. Now, with Valentin DeBees hounding Garrett Gerloff. Let's see. You remember last year, Valentin DeBees won coming out of the last corner on this Suzuki. Yep. This is a track that he's very familiar with and he, that he loves. And uh, as he comes up this front straightaway, does he have anything for the 2017 R6? Here we go. GSX R600 tucked in tightly behind the number one. Doesn't look like much. I mean, he can stay in the draft, but he doesn't have anything to fight with. Doesn't at look least like he can pull out of the draft, can he? No, Craig? Yeah, that's, absolutely not. Oh. This, oh, wow, Jason Aguilar has gone down. We talked about Jason before the start of this race. We said this is his big chance. Wow. I do not know what's going on with the 600 Superstock guys this weekend. We do not see Jason throw it down the road very often. We never see Nick do it. We never see yep. Michael do it. Yep. All three of them this weekend are experiencing horrendous luck. And, uh, you know, we get back to this battle at the front of Supersport with the three guys that we normally see. But Jason Aguilar down in turn 14, Canada corner. The significance of that, of course, is Aguilar is second in points, four behind Gilbert, who's not racing, and nine ahead of McFadden, who isn't racing either. So it was Aguilar's opportunity, as he's 14 points ahead of Connor Blevins, to really make his mark on this championship with the demise of Gilbert and McFadden. So Aguilar down and out. He's back on the racetrack, though. Good for him. So see if he can salvage any points. Here's a replay of what oh, happened, this is This is the last corner, and he just rode off the track, and he could have rode that out, uh, Greg, but he just... You know, when you see that tire wall coming up, yeah. you know, he did a good job just getting that bike down. He's got it back up. Hey, the kid got up. He, got, he picked that bike up out of the gravel, and he's back out on track. And you never know, Greg, with a red flag that could come out, he could it could wipe that clean for him. So for him to be able to get back up, that's what you got to do when you're in championship contention. So good luck to the California resident. He tries to make up positions. Not an easy task here at Road America because the track is so long. Up and out of the saddle, J.D. Beach had a bit of a moment there on the gas. Just another day at the office for the 95. So things remain the same, about a one second gap here as Garrett Gerloff now is really starting to put the hammer down, starting to sort out what's working for him on his R6 and closing the gap on JD Beach. Two teammates, of course, riding a similar motorcycle. I mean, it's the R6 and it is the Monster Energy Yamalu YS Graves Yamaha team but two completely set, different setups and riding styles. It certainly is, and right now Garrett has just kind of bridged that gap. He's not really pulling away anymore. I'm looking at the split times. JD, didn't, JD uh, lost a little bit in that uh, in that first split, but only just. It's going to be right around the same amount, 1.1 second lead. Garrett's definitely closed that down a little bit, and in doing so, he's been able to break Valentin just a little bit also. Now, here we go. Oh, this Shane big Richardson. battle for fourth. 
Shane Richardson now with Benny Solis losing two positions on his super sport bike. He's going after Brandon Posh. He's going to take over that position. But how about Shane Richardson, the number 26, in fourth when they cross the line. But Solis, whoop, and Richardson and has Brandon to check Posh. up. And Posh has got to go underneath them. And then we got Jason Farrell right with him, Greg, and Connor Blevins, who has come from row five, I believe. And he's putting himself right in the middle of this Superstock Championship now, Greg. I believe he was fourth coming into the championship. And he has started, he had to start way back in row, I believe, five. So for him to pull himself this far forward this early, it's a big move for him. So Brandon Posh on the TSE Racing Yamaha, his first go to Yamaha. He only got on some 600s in February of this year. He just turned 16 in the middle of March. Was riding for the M4 team and now has moved over to the TSE Racing Team out of Freehold, New Jersey, our KTM RC Cup National Champion, making his way right into Super Sport. So he's in line for a good position right now as he's gonna battle it out. Benny Solis, keep in mind, who's in fourth place right now, hasn't been off the podium in wow. the last three races. These Yamahas, Greg, they're checking out again. Yep. And uh, J.D. Beach on that last lap, a 218 flat. Wow. To Garrett Gerloff, a 217.6. So there goes the lap record that J.D. set this morning. Garrett yep. Gerloff is showing that he is ready to go, and he's on another personal best lap time this lap come through. Fastest Moto America lap ever around Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin's Road America for Garrett Gerloff, 217.697 in the short three-year history of this series, and he is going after his teammate, J.D. Beach, right now. Gerloff really getting after it in these early stages, scheduled for 11 laps because of the length of the course and the lap times. So all these races, they try to get them right around the 30 minute mark. So here comes the number one plate, Garrett Gerloff. Gerloff leading this championship by nine over J.D. Beach. It was four, so if J.D. can hold on, it would basically be a wash on the weekend in terms of the points advantage. But Gerloff with three wins so far this season, including the last time we raced yesterday, Two second place finishes and a third. J.D. Beach trying to hold on now as Valentin DeBees on just, that M4 X-Star Suzuki. I, I really feel like what we've seen, Greg, you and I talked about it a lot at the beginning of the year. These two Yamaha R6s were brand new to this team. We've seen the development of this bike, and now we're really starting to see the speed because they're breaking lap records that they'd set last year and so on. Yeah. So the Yamaha guys, the, 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 they've really been able to get these bikes working a little bit better because we've been able to see Valentin actually go with these guys and he's not being able to do that today 217697 so fast and uh 2177 the last time for JD out in front so these guys now are in the 17s that's that's an amazingly fast pace 17s is extremely i mean just absolutely ripping around this racetrack by the way you got to figure the superbike pace is usually in the 13s so only 4 seconds difference for about 400 cc difference incredible race action going on here's the battle for fourth place between Benny Solis on the 35 that's the H35 team out of North Hollywood California that's a Honda CBR 600 RR and a Yamaha Brandon Posh on the 21 machine but back up front we go JD Beach and Garrett Gerloff Garrett Gerloff right now looks like he's got an incredible pace you can see the difference in styles as Garrett the second bike in your screen, the number one plate, tries to keep those wheels in a line the best he can. And JD really is more comfortable with this motorcycle when it's sideways going into a corner. Correct. And yesterday, I thought that, that would play out into JD's favor, and I was completely wrong because Garrett kept that bike in line on those rain tires in, in dry conditions and did a fantastic job. And what he's done here today is showing me that he's ready to he's ready to fight for this. It would have been real easy for him to accept second. There was no way that was going to happen. And now he's just pushed the pace down into the 17s. JD's responded with that. I mean, JD is going to do 17-7 and come by his pit board here, and it's going to say plus zero. Yeah. And uh, that that's going to tell him, wow, you know, both these bikes are going really, really, really fast in the development. And uh, you know, I think from here on out, we're going to see lap records broke all year long, Greg. We come across the line, another lap time in the books. Garrett Gerloff just breaks the track record again, 17-6-7-5 for Gerloff, and that was a couple tenths, uh, about a half a second quicker than J.D. Beach. So J.D. Beach starting to come under pressure from his teammate, the reigning national champion, and J.D. knows what's at stake here. Staying close in this points battle. You know, it's another five points here in the Moto America Series 
It's five different. All right, back to fourth place. So Greg, this morning, these two guys know each other a little bit. I've done. I, I've been right. I've ridden with these guys a couple times. And Brandon came up to me and said, "All I want to do is beat Benny." That's what he said <laughs> to me this morning. All I want to do is beat Benny, and he just wants to ride with Benny and uh, and be close. And you can see uh, Brandon's just a little bit taller than Benny. Benny squeezes absolutely every inch out of that Honda that you could be that you that you could do. It's great seeing Honda's Mike Snyder here this weekend, along with uh, with Benny's team. Uh, it's great to see a little bit of the Honda support that we've got here. But uh, Brandon Posh on a bike he'd never ridden before this weekend. And uh, the TSE Racing guys right out of Wisconsin here have done a fantastic job putting the bike together so that Brandon can at least keep his season going, at least for this race weekend. And, uh, and he's right where, he would, right where he's been kind of all year. Look at the battle for the lead again as they go down through the carousel. Big, long right-hand corner. And I'm looking at our splits on our, our times right now. Nobody's really doing anything fantastic split-wise between these two. And GD's able to just kind of hold that gap, it looks like. If you're wondering about top speed of a 600 Super Sport bike, 162.7 mile an hour, that's measured at our particular split time. Usually what we see data-wise, a few mile an hour faster, probably about 170 miles an hour for a 600 machine. How, how incredible is that, that's, Jason? It's just insane, you know? It's, you know, 15 years ago, that was probably a decent thousand you know, uh, yeah. coming, coming down the front straightaways here, but now these guys are doing it, even pushing their own wind, which is just incredible. But here's that battle for fourth. As they come down through Canada Corner, they've separated themselves from that big super stock battle behind them. And uh, coming down here, and we just it just doesn't look like Brandon's quite got the motor underneath him to, to draft Benny, but he can stay there, but he just can't really do anything with him. But this 16-year-old kid, Rides amazing, Greg. I mean, he's really the real deal. Both these guys are. Nobody trains harder than Benny in the paddock. Uh, Benny's incredibly dedicated to his craft, and Brandon's the same exact way. But for 16 years old, he reminds me of a couple other kids that we've seen come through at 16 years old, and uh, and he's very, very hungry, very dedicated to get and smart. better, and he's, so he's smart. He's smart about racing. He yes. really understands racing. For a rider who's only been riding seven years, he started when he was nine years old. He's now 16 years old. So he's actually only been riding seven years. Yep. You know, he, he understands racing, and we actually had him in on BN Sports Connect during the KTM race, and to listen to him talk about race strategy and what he thought that the rider should do was was pretty telling on where his brain is. It really is, and, and talking with him even two or three years ago, we have a mutual friend, Paul Allison, who's been coaching and helping him over the last six, seven years. He's done an incredible job with Brandon. And the head on the kid's shoulders is he knows exactly what he wants. He knows exactly what he wants to go after. And he just said, yeah, I want to race. I want to do something. And the TSE crew uh, did, did were, were just so kind to put him on a bike this weekend and get him on that R6. And he's just really showing his worth. And the TSE crew, I think it's worth noting that yesterday Daytona 200 is still going on, although it's not part of this series. And that motorcycle that Brandon Posh is on finished second in this year's Daytona 200 with Corey West of It certainly did. And, you know, Corey, we know, is a great rider also. This is a look at the start. Uh, you can see that even Benny from the fourth row got a decent launch there. And uh, good, clean start by everybody. Everybody got off the line safe in through that turn one. Look at that start by J.D. Beach there in second in, on the second row. He was able to, to kind of get himself all the way up to the front as they headed to turn one. And you can see, see him moving his body around a little bit, Greg, wait, waiting to make sure he's, nobody's going to touch him on either side. And uh, Valentine here just kind of rode around the outside of Garrett. But what a great slow motion replay. And you can see Brandon's quite a way back there. So he's done well to get himself forward. We saw Jason Aguilar in that photo. How about Jason Farrell again with another great ride right now up in eighth place battling with Connor Blevins and Shane Richardson. So a good look at the restart of this race. Excellent pictures with our slow-mo shot. You can see all the body language and what's going on. Here's J.D. Beach. So J.D. Beach continues to lead the way over Garrett Gerloff. Something I want you to take note of. J.D. Beach's helmet. It's a Nikki Hayden replica helmet. It's an homage to his friend from Owensboro, Kentucky, Nikki Hayden, who passed away. I have to send some props out to Monster Energy because it was Monster Energy who agreed and allowed J.D. Beach to run that helmet for this weekend only. It's part of his contract that he needs to wear a helmet with the Monster scratch on it. So that was an allotment by Monster Energy to allow that. It was actually an idea for all the OWB plan to run that helmet. It was all thought up by J.D. Beach. Yeah, that's awesome. That's that's really good to, to see. And we got a quick look at uh, Valentin the Beast there in third. Yep. And then we're right back to this battle for fourth between Benny and Brandon. And this is a good battle. It's nice that, that Benny's got someone to dice it up with. They're just a little bit there behind Valentin. And, uh, and 
Yeah, you can see Brandon's bike just moving around just a little bit on the exit there. They had some spin-up problems yesterday, so they've made some changes to the bike. And uh, look, he's just as deep into Benny's draft as he can get. Let's see if he tries to pull out and do something down in turn five against Benny. No, he's not quite close enough. Benny's really good on the brakes, too. Both right. bikes moving around a lot. So let's go over your running order real quick. It's J.D. Beach, Garrett Gerloff, Valentin DeBees, Benny Solis, and Brandon Posh, the battle you're watching. And then in sixth place is Connor Blevins, super stock 600 leader, followed by Shane Richardson from New Zealand, Jason Farrell, the local rider, having a great go at it. And then it's Anthony Maziato, who's the third of our super stock 600 riders, second in points last year in KTM. He's in ninth. J.C. Camacho in tenth. Daytona Anderson in 11th. Jody Berry, 12th. Uh, Andrew Lee in 13th, Brandon Ort in 14th, and Caroline Olsen right now holding on to the last point available in this particular class. Here we go, Greg. Garrett's caught him. He's going to try to do something with him as they come down into Canada Corner, and he's just going to slide right underneath JD, and that's all based off of a very fast third split. He's up out of the seat. Uh -oh. Here, now the race is on, Greg. Now, now the race is really on. JD was able to get out early, get a little bit of a gap. Garrett has slowly and meticulously pulled that gap back in. Now it's going to be a question. Can JD hang on the back of Garrett Gerloff? Well, Garrett's a little bit wide as they exit there, and you can see GD, JD was a little bit tighter on his exit. He's going to get a really good drive. They're going to be drafting each other as they come across our finish line. Here we go. JD Beach takes over the lead momentarily, but Gerloff able to keep the gas on. So we'll see. Look at those shadows. That's a good indication of what's happening. JD Beach is hard on the brakes, trying to go around the outside. But Gerloff has oh, JD up and out of the saddle Ooh. for a moment. Wow. That was a close call. It was a little bit wider line, I think, that JD's used to. Hey, JD, there's a bump out there. Oh. Here he comes up the inside. So Beach is going to try to park him and then get on the gas. Look how well JD's wow, able to Greg, get Greg, you, you couldn't have contact. You couldn't have commented that any better. You, he did exactly what you said he was going to do. Did you see the drive he got out of there? Yeah. He got an incredible drive. He just was able to have Garrett just out a little bit further and uh, he just pushed Garrett out enough to where Garrett wasn't able to take advantage of the draft but now the race is really on and you know when we watch these two guys race they both do so so clean there's JD a little wide now a little bit wide is he going to be able to recover from that or is Garrett going to go underneath him nope he was able to recover from that okay that was close we've seen this before where Garrett Gerloff has had better pace than JD Beach and JD is able to race him always put himself in front of him JD's got incredible racecraft. he's always thinking on that motorcycle oh Brandon Posh with a look over his shoulder as he goes side by side with Benny Solis. So it's Honda versus Yamaha right now. Here comes Posh to 21. And no, it is Benny Solis. <laughs> so good on the brakes down at turn five. One of the things I want you to pay attention to on Benny's bike that they've really been working on, there's been a lot of chatter late in the braking zones. So they've, they've worked on some things, talking with Jason down there and Benny's crew. They went to another fork that they're more comfortable with. He was basically getting it down to the bump the bump stop on the forks, Greg, and the thing was, was vibrating a lot, a lot of chatter on the bottom of the stroke. They've gone to another fork, and it's it seemed to have helped that a little bit, looking at his bike going in there. It's giving him more confidence to break deeper into that corner. Left-hand part of your screen. Now, all of a sudden, J.D. Beach, is, he's heard the call. So maybe Garrett Gerloff threw him a shot and said, okay, J.D.'s really feeling racy right now. Maybe I'll just wait till the last lap here to try to make the break, because you can tell from the body language of Garrett Gerloff, the number one plate, He's the second rider of the Monster Energy Yamalu YES Graves Yamaha team there that when he got by J.D. Beach, he looked pretty desperate to try to make a break and mistakes started to happen. So here comes J.D. up onto the front straightaway. Ooh, oh, man. Us oh. Using up all of it, didn't he? Uh, all of it more. <laughs> a little bit of grass track, a little bit of dirt never hurt J.D. for sure as far as uh, the dirt track side of things go. Three laps to go in this one. Upper left-hand part of your screen is our running order. You can take a look at your favorite riders there. You can see that J.C. Camacho has gotten around Anthony Maziato for that final podium spot in the Super Stock 600 class as well as we continue to have eyes on this lead battle. Still Garrett Gerloff sits on that track record at 217.675, set lap four of this race. Last time by, those guys in the 18.7s and Garrett Gerloff with a 19 flat. That's how disruptive J.D. was when he made that pass on Garrett Gerloff. So into turn number five we go down the hill. JD, wow, is he deep again? Yep, can he's a little bit, but oh, you know, Garrett, upset he, Garrett a little. He really, he really gets the bike slow. Does JD at the, at, the, at the apex of the corner? Really controls his apex speed nicely and is able to drive off. Where Garrett likes to carry a lot of corner speed. So to me, JD kind of rides the bike a little bit like a thousand as a pair, as compared to Garrett just a little bit. So see these guys, you can see Garrett get nice and sideways coming in. And what he's doing is he's really getting on the brakes. See, Garrett's already off the brakes, trying to roll through the corner. Yep. JD kind of gets the bike in, stop, turn 
turn and, and back out. So that's, that's kind of what you notice. This is going to be JD running off the edge of the track, running out onto the paint, just uh, onto the grass. grass. And it, it really didn't look like he got out of it there, did it, Gary? Uh, <laughs> no, it didn't it, at all. And I, I actually think all. JD might send a <laughs> might send an invoice to Road America for mowing the lawn for him there. Yeah, that's when you that's when when you're Garrett, you get you get hit with rocks and things yeah, right that's behind true. you. You know that is true. Yeah, there's always that uh, that concern about a radiator puncture at some point as well. So JD Beach continues to lead the way here from Garrett Gerloff. These are two Monster Energy Yamalu YES Graves Yamaha. They have definitely checked out. About 10 seconds behind is that. M4 X-Star Suzuki of Valentin de Bees out of Albi, France. And now, here come the leaders up on some lap traffic. That's Valentine Welch. Yep, out and of Medford, Oregon. She's our second girl racer that we had here. And, and, and her credit to make this field, her bike wasn't even here Friday. Wasn't even here. Wow. Yesterday, her first time on the track was last chance or was the qualifying. She did the last chance qualifier today to get herself into the field. So it's great that she that she's even out there, Greg. Moto Shop Speed Monkey Racing entry on that Suzuki. Valentine Welsh out of Medford, Oregon. Now here coming up on the 550, Dan McCormick on the Me Motorsports bike. So doesn't look like uh, any big drama there. Is JD Beach a little bit wide? That's kind of a normal race line though on dry pavement. So JD Beach trying to get his motorcycle stopped. That movement, he likes. Here's a good look at the M4 X-Star Suzuki of Valentine DeBees. Last time by, Valentin went 19.9. So about 2.2 seconds slower than the riders up ahead of him, but sitting comfortably in this, third. This guy, I, I really, he's one of my favorite guys to watch ride. When we go out on Fridays and watch, yeah. he rides that bike so well. Here you go again. JD's gonna really control his mid-corner speed and then shoot off the corner. Garrett's gonna carry a little bit more corner speed. Uh, and here we, and now the battle for fourth. And those two Kawasaki's are starting Connor, to catch this battle. That's Connor Blevins and Shane Richardson exactly. right behind them. They're battling for Superstock race. Same two guys as yesterday, battling for that Superstock win. And uh, we saw just now Brandon actually led across the line two laps ago. We didn't get to see it, but I can see it out of my commentary position here. But those two Kawasaki's behind are in the 21s. The 600 Superstock guys are doing 21, 21.7, 21.8 as best lap times for Shane Richardson and Connor Blevins, and they're slowly reeling these two guys in. So it is two super sport machines, 35 minutes at least, 21. Brandon Posh being hounded now by two super stock 600s of Connor Blevins and Shane Richardson. This can be a bit of a danger zone for the super stock 600s because if they start thinking, I'm gonna go beat a super sport bike, that's when things can get a little hairy. So Connor Blevins has to keep his head about him. Look at Benny's bike. Watch Benny's bike here, see if there's any chatter. And it looks like they've got that thing sorted out pretty well down yep. there. So now they're catching up to Mark Rhodes here. Mark Rhodes has just probably seen blue flags. Good for him. Just kind of getting out of the way carefully there, letting our two leaders go through. Addison, Illinois resident, doing the right thing. So next time by, by the way, we're gonna have the white flag. So this is it. Garrett Gerloff has had enough time to study JD Beach. He tried to throw a shot there with four to go. Couldn't get it done. But Garrett Gerloff looks like he is in position right now to pounce. Yes, it does. And now this is where race strategy comes up. We've seen a few of the, we've seen a few back markers come into play as we get this white flag. These two Yamaha factory riders are gonna sort it out amongst themselves as Garrett goes by through the draft down into turn one. JD is probably gonna wait till turn five to try to do anything with him. He's gonna get a good drive out of here. We've seen him go by down into turn three, Greg. Yeah, but wait this Little, time, right? Yeah, I think he's gonna probably wait this time. And then he's gonna get, oh, he ran in wide. See, this is what can, can kind of sometimes happen. But Garrett really controlled his apex speed almost to a fault, and JD was able to get a good drive still. JD was a little wide, but squared it up. So here he goes, side by side they go. JD trying to get position. It's a tough one, these evenly matched motorcycles as JD takes over the lead for the moment. He definitely has position. Look at Garrett trying to get his motorcycle stopped. JD is there, Garrett doesn't care, side by side through turn number five, and it's JD Beach again with the lead. That's exactly right. Now, we've seen Garrett Gerloff go past JD on his way down to Canada Corner. The question is, in his mind right now, does he feel comfortable enough to, to let JD lead coming out of the last corner? As you can see here, we're waiting for that battle for fourth as we see Valentine and Dan McCormick here as they go into turn five. Well, Valentine, the 144, looking to make up another position here. Oh, is it a rider down? That's CJ LaRoche, Greg. That's the exit of the chicane. Here's our two leaders. They're coming into that section right now. And uh, this has gone down through the carousel. Wow, if that bike's in on the racetrack, they could go for a red flag on this one. But the white flag still flies as JD Beach leads through this section. Yellow flags waving. 
to indicate where that incident is. So here yeah, comes there's the bike on the right. They're pulling it away. Got it. Now Garrett Gerloff was able to get a good drive out of that turn a couple laps ago, and we were able to see him draft past JD. At this point right now, he's not quite close enough, Greg, so he is going to bank on the fact he's got to stay as close to JD as he can as they get ready to go through Canada Corner here. You're going to see Garrett just try to get as close as he can. Now what JD could possibly do here is we see a back marker up ahead of them. This could definitely play into the, play into the cards here. Let's see what happens, Greg, as they get ready to come into this last corner. All right, so here comes J.D. Beach. He's pole putting it. He's up the inside. Garrett Gerloff's move. J.D. getting on the gas. Garrett Gerloff got a handful, though. So here's the drag race up the hill. Can Garrett Gerloff get the draft of J.D. Beach? It isn't over till the line. J.D., the 95, streams to the line, and he will take the win by one-tenth of a second. That's great run by J.D. Beach. Unbelievable. Those guys swap wins this weekend. Here comes Valentine the Bees. And this, this guy here rode a great race. I mean, he went 218-3 as his fastest lap of the race. That's going to be, be good to get him back kind of on his charge again. This guy here every weekend puts out as much effort as he can. Let's see this battle for Superstock. Here's Benny Solis running fourth place. It looks like he's broke. Brandon Pass here. Connor Blevins is right up behind Brandon back there. But Benny Solis with another tremendous run on this Honda CBR 600, continuing to try to get that thing improved. And he's going to end up fourth, Greg. And that battle for Superstock, you're going to have Brandon Posh right behind him. Connor Blevins is going to do the double. And if my math is correct, that would put Connor Blevins in the lead with the 600 Superstock Championship. Shane Richardson out of New Zealand. What a story he and his crew have in second spot in Superstock 600 along with Anthony Maziato. So the podium is set for Superstock 600. As those riders finish 6th, 7th, and 8th, Daytona Anderson in on the Super Sport bike in ninth spot. So it's J.D. Beach, Garrett Gerloff, Valentin DeBees, Benny Solis, Brandon Posh. A good ride for him on a brand new motorcycle. Didn't even think he was going to race. A little tap of the helmet for J.D. Beach. This is a race he wanted to win because J.D., I know, in his heart of hearts, wants to dedicate this race win. And looking back on the leaderboard, Shane Richardson 7th, Anthony Maziato 8th, Daytona Anderson 9th, Andrew Lee 10th, Jody Berry in 12th, and whoa, if you're a Caroline Olsen fan, Caroline Olsen finishes in 12th spot and 5th in Super Stock 600 with a best lap time of 24.6. So the Norwegian on the 43 bike, well within the top 15 overall, and fifth in Super Stock 600. I hasten to bet that that was probably her best race finish in Super Stock 600. Best ever. Super happy for her and the whole Mean Motorsports crew. That's that's a great job. Uh, Brandon Cleland Brandon right behind Cleland her. on the 975 great, M4 X-Star Suzuki I'm, doing a great job. I'm really interested to see what happened as we get a replay here of what happened down in the last couple corners here between JD Beach and uh, Garrett Gerloff, the slow motion replay. And uh, you can see JD's bike going forward. Garrett's Garrett trying to get in that tuck as early as he can, He Greg, was, yeah. And had that thing spinning just a little bit. And that can really be the difference. That bike just split spinning ever so slightly. What a race, what a margin of victory. 0.102 seconds for the 95 of J.D. Beach. Swapping wins and back on top of the box for J.D. That's going to be his third win of the season as well. Garrett Gerloff, he tried everything. I'm going to tell you, it'll be interesting to, to find out after this race. Garrett Gerloff looks like he went to the apex of that corner, got the bike turned, and just threw the throttle to the stop. Absolutely, Greg. But maybe too much wheel spin. As now, saluting the fans, congratulations, Connor Blevins, the 37 in your screen. On a run, 26 is Shane Richardson. I mean, great stories, and Anthony Maziato as well, back on the podium. So Maziato finished second back in the third race, which is the first round at Virginia. And now Maziato will finish in the third spot in Super Stock 600. And by the way, there's an overall podium, of course, for Super Sport, which will be J.D. Beach, Gerloff, and, and DeBees. And then there is a second podium for the Super Stock 600 riders, so they get to celebrate their successes on track and in their class. So here's a look at it down at the bottom. You can see J.D., what a close margin of victory. Valentin DeBees, they have some work cut out for them because the next track we go to, it's a big one. We're going to Utah, it's another long track. So the results scrolling on the bottom. Right now you can see Look at that, Caroline Olsen. She is on the first page of this one. So, great job by all the racers here. We'll take a break on BN Sports. On the other side, we'll talk to them, so don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to the Dunlop Championship of Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. We just witnessed a spectacular Super Sport Super Stock 600 race. And let's get down to Hannah, who has our race winner. He must be happy, Hannah. I'm here with J.D. Beach, our race winner. Second, Second place, place today, today, top, of, top the of the box. You must you be must feeling, feeling really great. great. You, got you got an awesome, an awesome start. start. Um, you were battling, um, you're battling with, your with your teammate. Tell, Tell us about that, about that a little bit. bit. Yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a great, great race, race when, when I came, came around, around the, fir the, the first lap. It said uh, plus one, so I, I knew on this track it was it was going to be hard to keep that. Uh, and, uh, and at, at, after, after a few laps, laps he was right there, right there uh, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, me, with me, and I saw, and I saw on his board he had a uh, plus, plus three, so, so I knew it was just me and him, and, him and uh, just, uh, just try to hit, hit my marks, marks every, every, every lap, lap and each, each turn, turn, and it, it, was, it was definitely, definitely a hard, hard race. race. It was hot it was here today. I mean, I don't think I've ever been here when it's been this hot, but it was a great race, and I just got to dedicate this one to everybody at... Unset, unset downs, downs mean uh, I've, I've learned out there, out there to, to, ne to never, never quit, quit until the until the heck of flag, flag and, and uh, that's, uh, that's what, what I did uh, did, uh, did today and just kept just pushing. pushing. Great job! Great that's job. our that's first, first place, place winner. winner. All right, JD, congratulations! What a race! Another bit of racecraft for JD Beach, I think, with Garrett Gerloff. I mean, he really had to make it happen. You know, these guys race each other so close, and they race each other so clean week in and week out. And it's great TV for us to be able to see that both these guys uh, push themselves to the kind of lap times that they were doing. And uh, super cool to see JD come back after yesterday. Look at him sliding that bike race. He comes out of turn one. And there was a time when you couldn't touch all these wet, uh, white lines and things, but now you can run up over that curbing. Great slow motion stuff by our camera guys out there in the turn one area and all over the track, actually. And look at the weather. Like this is, this is what he's talking about. We don't generally get to see this kind of heat. Well, not much of a consolation for second place Garrett Gerloff, but the fastest lap of the race, an outright track record here for a super sport at a 217.675, finishing a tenth behind J.D. Beach. He's with Hannah. That's right. I'm here with Garrett, Garrett second, second place finisher, finisher today. today. They were just they were mentioning how you set the set fastest, fastest lap, lap of the race and actually the track, the track record for the super, for the super sport. sport. You know, a lot, you know, a lot of, back of back and forth again, again with your teammate. Your teammate. How, how are you how feeling right now? I mean, I guess, I mean, that's, I guess one, that's one, uh, that's one, one win, win for today. For today. No, no, gosh, gosh, I really, I really wanted, wanted that victory. That victory and, um, and um, when you pulled off that second, second gap in the beginning, beginning, I was pushing as hard as I could to catch back up. And, and, and uh, yeah, the yeah, pace, pace, pace was hot today. And, and we were both we were pushing. pushing. I was sliding, I was sliding the, front, the front, the rear. And, and uh, uh, it, it was, was a lot of fun. JD's riding really strong. And I was doing everything I could to to be right there and then to wait to make a move. But we were so equal, it was hard to get alongside him except for like a Canada corner. And last lap. Just, just went a little went bit too, a little deep, deep into the carousel, into the carousel and, didn't get, and didn't get didn't set up my drive onto the back straightaway, back straightaway. and into, and into uh, uh, into Canada I wasn't close enough, enough and just tried, just tried to set it up to where maybe I could um, pass him into the, the last corner, corner with that lapper there but he went inside I went inside and really just tried to get that draft but you know these things are rocket ships but they're they're both rocket ships so they're going the same speed pretty much and by the time I caught the draft we were already at the line and. I'm, I'm, I'm bummed. bummed. I really I am. am. Like, like my bike my felt bike great. Felt I felt good. Made some mistakes, but you know, I felt, you know, I felt right there. And I really, I really wanted, wanted that win and that double. double you know, always got a double this year. So, so. Uh, I'm really uh, excited, excited to, to be on the podium, podium though. though. Can't thank all my sponsors, sponsors enough, and just got to give all the glory to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. That's our second place finisher. All right. So Garrett Gerloff now four points the lead, just like he came in here as they swap wins. Garrett's, Garrett's riding like he doesn't have the number one plate already. He, yeah. you know, that's what he reminds me of. He's riding so hungry, and he's riding like he's disappointed with second. But when you look at the time, 17-6, 17-7, yeah, he ran the fastest lap of the race, broke the lap record, and did all that stuff. That just goes to show you how great JD's riding. Both these guys are riding so well, and the Yamaha team has done such a tremendous job giving those bikes, uh, you know, making them as close as they are to each other. They're, they're the identical motorcycles. Those guys, the pride and joy of the Monster Energy Yamalu YS Graves Yamaha team, but the pride and joy of the M4 X-Star Suzuki team finished third today. 17 and a half seconds adrift. It's Valentine, Valentin to bees. Hey, Valentin, you've got to be feeling really good coming off of Virginia not finishing the races and then yesterday with your, your tire kind of mishap. So how, how does it feel to be, be on the back on the podium? Um, it's a big improvement because we went to DNF and uh, 14 position. And <laughs> So, so get that it's, uh, it's uh, not what I want, but it's, it's uh, improvement. improvement. And, and um, um, it was really important for me to, to finish that race. I feel I can stay with them, but uh, with uh, taking too much risk with my bike. So um, I say, OK, just slow down and uh, finish that race, get that podium, and then uh, we will step up, step up the next race. 
All right. All right. Well, best, well, best of luck to you the rest of the season. season. Thank, Thank you very much. much. All right. So, Valentin to bees there. You got to step it up at Utah, another big horsepower type track. So, doing a lot of work. And this is a very, very talented motorcycle rider and a good plan. Two DNFs and that 14th place position. Way to just put this race result in the books. JD Beach over Gerloff, Valentin DeBees, Benny Solis, a solid fourth. His first time off the podium in the last four races. Then Brandon Posh, a good solid fifth place for the 16 year old. And then that super stock 600 battle, Connor Blevin, Shane Richardson, Anthony Maziato. They'll be talking about that one on the podium. Daytona Anderson on his M4 Ridiculous Racing Suzuki. He'll finish up in the ninth spot. Then it's Andrew Lee, Jody Berry, Caroline Olsen, fifth in Super Stock, 612th on the racetrack, ahead of Brandon Cleland. That was .066 margin between those two. Uh, Brayden Nort, JC Camacho, who was up there early, he captures our last point. And I'd be interested to see what spot. happened to JC on that, on that, Greg. No doubt. So, Gerloff and JD Beach, like I mentioned, four points now. So, at this point in the season, it looks like an all Yamaha battle as Benny Salih is 53 points adrift. Valentin DeBees clawing his way back up into the, trying to claw his way back up into the top three. And then Posh hanging out there in fifth spot. Now again, six, seven, eight, ninth. That's that battle in the Super Sport Championship, not the Super Stock 600. Here's a look at the podium. The celebration's getting ready to go on. You can see the disappointment on Garrett Gerloff's face. I mean, second place, and he's like, doggone it. It was so close. I almost had it. He wants that double, Greg. He does. He yeah. wants that double. He wants no one's double. doubled yet this year, like he mentioned. But yeah, it's a good track in Utah for the Yamaha here. Riders. Fist bumps all around, but it's J.D. JD Beach, Beach standing on top of the podium boy. with that Nikki Hayden replica helmet. I'm sure a very special moment for J.D. J.D. Beach, Garrett Gerloff, and Valentin DeBees filling out the Super Sport podium. We'll, we'll take a break. On the other side, the Super Stock 600 winner. Don't go anywhere.